Hi there, my name is Lindsay Oros. I'm a physician assistant at the Virginia Spine Institute. Today, I'm excited to talk to you about an extremely common issue that we see here at the Virginia Spine Institute. I'm gonna go through the topic, discuss the anatomy, the symptoms, and some basic treatments. So our discussion starts at talking about a disc herniation. Everyone's kind of heard of this, but let's review the anatomy first. So the spine is made up a series of bones and discs that alternate up and down the entire spine. At each level of disc, there is one nerve that comes off this center canal of nerves, branches off through a little space called the foramen, and each nerve travels down into the leg in a different pattern. These patterns are called dermatomes. So we will often ask you, where does your pain go? And that helps us to identify where the initial problem might be coming from. So this is another view. This is a view of your spine from the side. This is looking at you from behind. This shows how lots of nerves run down the middle, but then one nerve branches off on either side, and these go down into the legs in different patterns. For instance, the L5 nerve goes to the buttock, the outside of the thigh, the outside of the calf, and generally, generally the top of the foot into the big toe. The S1 nerve generally goes to the buttock, down the back of the thigh and the back of the calf, and into either the bottom or maybe outside of the foot. Now, this dermatomal map is really just an outline. There are overlapping symptoms and things that can vary, but in general, it's a good indicator as to what nerve root might be pinched with the disc herniation. So, this is a perfectly normal spine. But if we look to see what happens over time with aging, genetics, and wear and tear, we get some disc degeneration. And as the discs degenerate, they develop cracks and tears and herniations. Remember, this is a space where the nerve comes out of the foramen, and if the disc is pushing back towards that, it can really pinch on nerves. Let's show you what that looks like. So this is a cross-sectional view of what we were just looking at. This in, here, this in here is the cartilage part of the disc. It's generally soft. This outer ligament is called the annulus, and this is very thick. In this picture, we can see there's a tear in that ligament, allowing the center cartilage to come out through the tear. So tearing in the outer lining of the disc is very painful. There are nerve fibers on the outside of the disc that give us pain. And this is usually very severe when these acute tears occur. But even more severe is when the tear is so thick that it allows the cartilage to squirt through the tear right back towards the nerve. Remember, these nerves go down into the legs and can cause severe pain, weakness, numbness, or some combination of all of these items. So a disc herniation starts as a degenerative disc generally, or an acute injury, tears the outer lining of the disc, which is a ligament, squirts back and pinches on the nerve. So we have a combination of a disc problem, a rupture, and then a pinched nerve. So the pain in the leg can be extremely excruciating. These are some of the more symptomatic patients that we'll see. They'll come in and say that this is the most pain they've ever had, and they even often compare it to childbirth and being worse than that. You can imagine if a nerve is severely pinched, it makes it difficult to walk, especially if weakness and numbness occurs. Thankfully, when these tears happen, it tends to be one side or the other, affecting only one leg. But even when one leg is involved, it can be very painful. So the symptoms of the tear generally are severe back pain. People will say they can't stand upright. Um, they often have to lay flat on the floor. And um, it takes about a week to get through that tearing pain. But if you have the herniation as well as the tear, that's where you get that leg pain going down the back of the leg or the side of the leg, the numbness and the weakness. When you come to our office, we can help identify these problems with x-rays and an MRI. And the treatments are really the same, uh, whether it's the tear without the rupture or whether the herniation has occurred. We use anti-inflammatory medications, often in steroid form, to be more powerful to calm down swelling and inflammation, which occurs around the nerves. 
We also use um, physical therapy to help with traction and creating more space around the nerves. And even injections can be extremely beneficial. Uh, they calm down swelling as well and really go right to the root of the problem. This combined approach often gets people through these herniations and they go back to life and we give them exercises to protect their back and hopefully prevent this from occurring again. There are a subset of people who go on to have worsening symptoms despite all of these treatments and surgical intervention can be extremely beneficial. Um, those items will be discussed uh, further with your surgeon based on the pathology and what can be done. But I want you to know that there's a gamut of things that we can do. And if you are dealing with this excruciating problem, we can certainly get you better.